this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today I would like to show you how you can create a wood effect on your cardstock and I'm using different media and I'll also show you different ways with these media. So the first one which is rather obvious, let me just put this aside, is using an embossing folder. I've got this Tim Buttholes embossing folder if it's still available, I'm going to link to that below. And this is a 3D embossing folder. So the easiest way, obviously, is to just emboss this. Uh, I would mist my cardstock with the uh, with a water bottle, just because, just because this is a 3D one and it is quite deep. So you don't want any cracking or ripping of the paper. But the second way to do this, because so, I'm not showing you the first one, is to actually ink up your embossing folder, which gives even a more three-dimensional look. So for that, I'm just using my vintage photo. You can use any brown ink. And I'm just swiping this along my embossing folder. Just going in the direction. I don't want to press it in. Although, having said that, with the 3D embossing folders, it's actually quite easy to do that. So, as I said before, I'm going to ink my cardstock and I'm using craft cardstock because that way it almost looks like wood anyway. So, I'm just doing this off camera. And it's just a light mist. You just want a bit for this cardstock to be a bit more bendable. And I just set this in here. Just trying to push this down. Ideally, you don't move it too much, but I think I just caught it in the hinge there. So, and I'm putting this through my embossing machine, sorry, my um, die cutting machine. Now, this is quite a thick sandwich, so I just need to play around and I do this off camera and then I show you how it looks. So in my um, die cutting machine, I've got the Sizzix fold away. Um, it was just the base plate plus one of the cutting plates on top. So, and when I open it up, I've got, the ink. I've got a bit of water here, but I'm not too fussed about this. And the ink I applied on top has basically gone into the grooves. So I've got a really, really nice three dimensional look to this. So I'm leaving this to dry now. You can create something similar if you use the debossed side and go over it with your ink pad afterwards. But I prefer it this way. I think it looks so much more natural. So the second way to create it is using a stencil. I've got this small stencil here. And again, I'm going to use this on craft cardstock. So I'm going to tape this down and I think I like to have that bit on top there. So I'm just using my low tech tape. And I'm using the vintage photo again. I don't have many brown colours anyway. I've got the Lavinia Elements truffle as well. So I'm just going to ink my blending brush up. I'm just going to go over this. I'm going to speed this up now for the video, but I want to show you another technique afterwards. So you could obviously leave it at that, but I want to put this through my die cutting machine again, and I want to emboss this again. Um, i quickly show you what it looks like when you just do the stenciling. So I'm just lifting it up on one side and I'm using the other side as a hinge so I don't misplace it. So this is what it looks like. So you've got the um, image there, but it doesn't look like wood just yet. So what I'm doing is on my base plate, I'm going to put a silicon mat. Sometimes they come with your die cutting machine. I always suspected I had one and I thought it was part of the packaging and threw it away. But I'm just using this silicon mat. This is a baking mat that I've cut to piece, to, um, in, in half, into pieces, used for different purposes. So I'm placing this on top. Sorry, one thing I forgot. Again, on the back, just missed it a little bit. So I'm placing it on there. 
because now I've got ink on the top here. I'm putting another piece of scrap paper on top because I don't want this to um, come off on my die cutting plate. And then I'm going to put it through the die cutting machine. And what this does is it embosses the stencil onto the paper as well. I shall do this off screen again and then show you how it looks. So sometimes you have to play a bit around with your sandwich. Um, I normally, when I put the um, silicone mat through, I don't have to take away any of the base plates, but you have to play a bit around. Um, I like to move the silicone mat a bit in, in, so it's not going through at the same time as the cutting mats, and then I usually succeed. So you can already see from the back it has embossed. So when I take this off now, oh, it's tearing a little bit. It's not the best. Um, paper. I don't know if it's visible, but you have got the embossed effect where you had the ink. So if you're not happy with this, you could always put it through again and get a bit more pressure. And I just want to show you my scrap paper on top so the ink does come off. So I actually want to need to need to wash this in a moment. So, so this is the second technique. And the third technique is a really quick one. I had a trial run here is just to use your ink pads and it's useful to have the square or the rectangular ones and I like the mix of the salvage patina and the vintage photo and all you do is you just take your ink, ink pad and you just swipe across or you can do it down if you want to and I like to start with this salvage patina because that's the lighter colour you want this streaky look to it and then you just go over it with a vintage photo. And if you want to accentuate anything you can just go on with the edges and create a bit more. But I really like the look of it. I think it looks a bit like weathered wood. It's nice for like a beach hut theme. So that's the third technique. And again, obviously, I've done this on white cardstock now. You could do this on coloured cardstock. Um, I'll tell you what, I actually haven't tried it on the craft cardstock. I shall do this quickly as well. By the way, I think the mistake I made here, because it's tall, my craft cardstock, mine's from the works, it has got... A smoother side and a rougher side so check that out before you use your paper so again I'm using the salvage patina oh you've got the really chalky effect there of the oxide that is really nice I think and then the vintage photo which actually takes a bit away again from the chalky effect. If you're bothered about um, your ink pads going a bit funny, yeah, um, you might want to clean this up afterwards. You could just stamp this off a little bit and it should not be affected. But yeah, interesting. I'm not sure I like this. I think I prefer it on the white cardstock. But yeah, these are three techniques on how to create uh, or actually a bit more because you only you stencil and you emboss on this one. So a few techniques on how to create uh, a wood effect on your cardstock. And I will create a few Father's Day cards as a sort of second part to this video. And I shall be posting them soon. I'm quickly popping in again. What I forgot to say was... If you don't have craft cardstock, don't forget you can use packaging. I've got this um, like a parcel paper um, and even though it's crinkled on the back, once you put that through your die cutting machine again with an embossing folder, that will disappear. I've also got this. This is packaging that came with a parcel or you might have brown envelopes. So especially if it's just for a background and you stick this on some heavier cardstock anyway, don't dismiss any of these materials for using as your background.